So can you tell me a bit about yourself and uh, your role at the company and how you sort of plans for IBM the next year or two? So my name is Dirk Lassens. I'm uh, responsible, globally responsible for uh, IBM's uh, metals and mining business based out of Antwerp. Um, our plans are, uh, as IBM is giving uh, analytics as one of our primary strategic priorities, uh, is to make this of value to the industry of mining. And that's why we're here. And specifically, uh, how can a analytics uh, help, uh, help a company save time and money and health and safety? And the way I always say is, is that um, the industry, the, the mining industry, is um, has got a high risk profile by because of the fact it's high capital intensive, the fact it's dealing with commodity markets, it's got a health and safety uh, high risk profile, and so on. So the way we bring analytics in is um, it has predictability to what's going on, and that mitigates risk by definition. So a couple of examples. Um, for instance, in asset management, you can do on predictive maintenance, and we provide a solution suite there, predicting equipment to fail before it actually happens. Um, on production production level, we can predict quality based on production parameters um, before the product actually re uh, reaches the, the, the final inventory. Health and safety, um, we have a, a solution um, that's called Guardian Angel that gives you, that uh, equips people with various uh, uh, metering um, objects on the, on the body. Connected to a mobile application, if somebody falls over, people around those people are notified on their uh, on their mobile phone, they can go there and help out, and so on. So there's various uh, applications we can, we, can, uh, we can provide. And can you put a dollar, dollar and cents figure on, on the sort of savings that companies would enjoy by utilizing this technology? I'll give you one example. This is an example we had with uh, recently finished a pilot project with a platinum producer here in South Africa. What we did was, together with um, our business partners of MineRP, the mining technical system providers, we provided an analytics on top of that. What we provided was the optimization of um, a shaft uh, in one of their mining operations. So the mining plan would come from MineRP, and we then optimized that mine plan to. Um, give an optimal schedule that then feeds back into the plan and kind of dynam dynamically, dynamically changes as uh, things uh, carry on. Absolutely, and um, the dollar value? Dollar value, percentage wise, saving to business? So the percentage, the, the, um, the saving was an addition of 5 to 2, 10 percent on the NPV over the next three years, in dollars or in rand, <coughs> excuse me, in rand. It was around 120 million rand per annum. <clears throat> and, and your key customer base in South Africa, and who, who's been really utilizing the technology? We're dealing with uh, with most of the big mining houses. So you can name whether it's Anglo, whether it's uh, Impala, whether it's uh, BHP, I mean, all of them who are present we are dealing with. And uh, what, what did you say is a key differentiating factor between you, you and your competition in a very tight market? The key differentiator is that we um, are independent of the equip equipment that's being utilized. So we've got open integration technology that takes data from uh, anywhere it's being provided. Um, I would also say the key differentiator is the fact that we have research dedicated to the mining industry. So the analytics we provide and the optimization tools and solutions are very advanced. So again, to the, the, the example of the, um, the uh, platinum miner here in South Africa, it's 185,000 tasks that need to be scheduled optimally over three years. So that is really heavy duty math sciences optimization and we feel very strongly uh, equipped to do that kind of work. So it's a, it's a combination of open technology, new technology, plus dedicated research to the mining industry. And, and the usability of, of, the, of, the, of the software for, for the man on the ground? What we try to do in a number of, of, of locations is to uh, provide mobile devices. We're working together with Apple. Uh, we've got um, an alliance with Apple, which we announced uh, three or four months ago, like the Garden Angel uh, app I just spoke about for health and safety. is an Apple app, so it's as simple as it humanly can be. So uh, it's an interface you used to work with when you're using your smartphone. And so that's the way we want to work for, for, for the man on the ground. As well. And the idea of partnering up with Apple specifically? The idea? Uh, 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 why Apple specifically to partner with? For the reason we were just describing, they, in terms of usability and consumability, they're the leaders in the market. So to provide mobile user interface that is easy to use and very intuitive, they can, we cannot. So they're the leaders in that. And as we experienced the last um, 
three months, four months when the first apps came on the market, you know, it's very powerful. And can you, can you conceptualize what the mine of 2035 might look like? If technology had its way. The mine of 2035. Yeah. I would, I would, I would, um, I would expect us to, to reach a level of automation that's way beyond what we've got now. I would expect us to have data flowing through that automated operation in a way that we can continuously improve the efficiency and the productivity of the equipment. That it, and I would expect us to use cognitive systems that understand and interpret all the data coming through uh, and in a learning mode improving the operation as it goes along. So very much more independent from human interaction. And uh, how would you, how would you um guide your customers to make use of the data because there must be a lot of data coming now. How best to make use of that for your company? That's a good question. In a mining uh, uh, environment specifically that is very complex, you would have more than 300 mining technical systems on an asset level. That is, it makes no sense to replace them all, leave them where they are, but use state-of-the-art uh, integration technology that amalgamates all that information coming through and presents it in a very usable way, in a standard way. Uh, in a database format everybody can work with because then you easily bridge that all that information coming from mining technical systems into an enterprise level where you then can start fulfilling your demand, auditing what's going on in the mine uh, and so on and so on. And how well does this translate into virtual reality which is the new buzzword in, in, in mine technology? For virtual reality I would say is, is, is the game more of uh, uh, the equipment providers and suppliers into the mining industry They've come a long way working together with Joy Global, for instance. I know they're very advanced in that. It's not really our game. What we do is we, we do have some gaming technology we deploy for training purposes. We have a couple of cases there, but not in mining yet. It's really virtual reality, that kind of stuff. We leave it to the equipment providers. And with African mining, it's a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, fresh opportunities. Where, where do you see uh, key growth areas for your business? On the analytics, as we just described, I really think there's huge opportunity there. I feel that um, the African mining market, well, it's, you know, kind of valid for mining all around, but, but, but recent history has proven that. With big shifts in demand, big shifts in environment, it's very difficult to respond to those shifts. So there's a lack of agility to the way the market changes. I would say from a, from a macro kind of mindset perspective, that is what needs to happen now to fix that problem. The way you fix that problem is what we just described. So you amalgamate your data on a, on a mining asset level, you present it on an enterprise level, you will fulfill demand and respond to demand as it changes, and that is the direction they should take. And what, what could South African mining learn from the way the Euro European um, industries approach, approach mining in a more professional manner? I would say, consume? if you look at just one example, if you look at uh, Boliden, that's a Swedish copper miner. They are by far the most uh, productive uh, and efficient copper miner in the world. But they've done that because they had to. Their labor cost is higher than anywhere else. So their cost okay. per ton of, of copper is lower than anywhere else regardless. So out of necessity, they have been working on structural productivity improvement almost for as long as they exist. So if you could go there and see how they do their operation, how, how far they've gone in autonomous mining, in uh, mobile devices, in using technology to improve efficiency, it's a big example. Structural productivity environment, um, initiatives, projects, Apply them to, uh, across the board, and what I just explained, um, always with agility in mind, always with demand alignment in mind. Absolutely. And can you put a number on, on when we might see 80% mechanization across the board in, in mining? Oof. That's a tough one, this is because it's not really a question to me alone. You know, A lot of our colleagues here in the Indian Daba would, uh, would be able to answer that question. I'm not going to put the number on that, I really don't know. I have no view on that. Any solutions to our energy crisis? <laughs> well, the energy crisis is an interesting one because, again, um, the steel industry has been providing, has, has been asking for our analytic solution in energy optimization. So, if you look at, and, and sometimes it's much simpler than you think it is, right? If you look at all the automation data that comes through on a plant level, if you look at the energy consumption, if you look at utility sources, energy sources, and, and energy consumption, and you um, align that with the schedule of your operation, you will be surprised how much energy efficiency you can apply just by working with the data you are getting. I'm not talking about big and massive infrastructure changes. I'm just talking about look at your data, synchronize production schedules with energy schedules. Because often energy is used as an unconstrained resource. It's not, of course. There's a price uh, tag to it. So align the two and you would be surprised how much uh, energy you can save. Absolutely.
Thanks for your time, sir. My pleasure.